roadways in the area. All streets remain open to vehicular traffic. Proceed to the nearest sidewalk and obey all laws. Failure to adhere to this order may result in citation or arrest. <laughs> got uh, a policing that's out of touch with the social needs but is still institutionally strong and, and, and cannot be pressured to reform. Uh, we've got angry people, uh, I guess you might call the anarchists here, who are, are, are taking out anger and causing damage to things uh, randomly, uh, feeling that somehow that's a stri striking out against authority. Uh, the crazy thing is we've got two forces here that would seem diametrically opposed and yet they're feeding each other. The, the anarchists would say that they want to show how policing is ineffectual. Policing can't stop them, they can't make it safe, they can't... And, and the police would like to say, see when you don't fund us enough, see how much craziness goes on. There's more crime, there's more shooting, so we need to fund us more. And these kinds of things actually give fuel to each other. It's what you call it a vicious cycle. They're both feeding each other and speeding a downward spiral, which is helping nobody. I am born and raised here, and yes, it is um, a liberal city, but there are still a lot of microaggressions and implicit bias that I experience today. Like, I can still go into a store on, let's say, Mississippi Avenue and be followed around that store because of the color of my skin. So we still have a lot of work to do. And, um, you know, racism and biases are ingrained in the DNA and the fabric of America. So this, you know, us having honest conversations and talking about race and biases because of someone's sexuality, sexual orientation, we have to continue these conversations and we have to um, make real change to move forward. I, I think there are a bunch of disillusioned people um, just out to destroy things, I guess. You know, they have no purpose, no, uh, no legitimate protest. They're just out there creating uh, havoc, you know, breaking windows, burning trash cans, you know. It's all senseless uh, activity as far as I can tell. But I thought the police did a great job. Do you think it, it's not the people's job to like criticize the government if they're doing something really wrong, like killing people or enslaving more people? There are more people in our prisons than any other country. Would you like to explain that? Because I'm the daughter of one of them. We're just out here just to support our our fellow protesters and let them know that uh, we're going to stand with them. And we decided to come to this area because it seemed like this area is very quiet and a lot of people are choosing property over humans and we want them to change their mind, change their thought about that. Protest is a voice of the unheard, right? And when there is an injustice happening, it affects us all, regardless if anyone wants to believe that or not. But any injustice will affect us all. So I feel like that's the protest is uh, is translating that. The challenge with protests are that um, once they transition into breaking windows, uh, vandalism, so I, I think they've, they've lost they've lost the empathy uh, of the community. They also, it, it, it's, um, it's counterproductive. Um, understand that there's systemic racism, there's a, a number of challenges in American society, but you don't solve that by vandalism, something like that. That actually plays right into the hands of the people who are proponents of that. So it's a shame. 
mean, you gotta, you gotta think about it though. This change is not gonna happen overnight. This is what, 465 years of uh, racism ingrained in our country? This is not going to happen overnight. So it's gonna take time for this change, but we have to stay resilient and speak up and, and make sure that we come together as a community.